Hey there, everyone. Nubkex here, recording this in a heat wave in Ireland. Oh boy, we're getting cooked. But today we're taking a look at the Fury Warrior on the Shadowlands beta for World of Warcraft. Um, yesterday we looked at the Arms Warrior. Tomorrow will be Prot Warrior. And of course, we've already looked at a few classes, and we'll be looking at every single class and spec over the coming few weeks. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's dive in and look at Fury. All right, well, here we are in game with our Fury Warrior, uh, dressed up as RoboCop, and uh, actually a little preview of the changes, which we're going to come to in a couple of minutes. But if you pay attention to my weapons and how they're sheathed and all of that, you might, uh, that's a preview of one of the changes, just a little hint. But um yeah, I wanted to do this just to start off. Let me know what you think of this, but this is a small segment at the start, just a recap of how the sort of core rotation of the Fury Warrior works. Uh, because uh, I got this request that like for people especially that haven't played the spec in recent times or have taken a bit of a break from the game, just to know what the hell we're even talking about here in the video. So let's go over it very quickly. The way that um, Fury Warrior works. Uh, well, number one, um, your melee attacks hit relatively hard and are of course gonna be generating rage. Uh, and that's our big goal, is we want to generate as much rage as possible. Why? Because uh, our spender is called Rampage, and this does a ton of damage. It costs 80 rage, and it's going to unleash a series of four brutal strikes for a total of 1,356 physical damage. I mean, you can see my melee attacks are hitting for like 100-ish. So this does a ton of damage. That's what you're building up for. How do we build up to that? Our main builder is Bloodthirst. Um, so Bloodthirst, by default, if I just put in some filler stuff here... You can do this every third GCD, right? Uh, and Bloodthirst is going to do... Our damage numbers, sorry, are going to change slightly here. But it's going to do about 400 physical damage. It restores 3% of your maximum health. That actually did get slightly nerfed from 5%. Uh, and it generates a Rage. Our other generator then is Raging Blow, which has a 7 second recharge. Um, you'll hit for 435 physical damage, generating 12 Rage. And uh, this has two charges and has a 20% chance to instantly reset its cooldown or like instantly generate another charge every time you hit with it. Building on top of this as well, the core um, core passive effect that we do have going here, which is what was changing the damage numbers slightly, is Enrage. Becoming Enraged increases your damage done by 30%, that's based off your mastery, haste by 15%, and movement speed by 10%, and that lasts for 4 seconds. And Rampage always enrages you. Always enrages you. Um, Bloodthirst by default has a 30% chance to enrage you. I do have a talent uh, called Fresh Meat, which is increasing that to uh, 45%, but by default it's a 30% chance. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like, our core rotation then is going to be, you know, just uh, generate rage, spend it on rampage uh, as much as you can, fill in with whirlwind. I actually did an extra whirlwind there that I shouldn't have, for example. And yeah, bloodthirst pretty much on cooldown, fill with whirlwind. You can raging blow, bloodthirst, whirlwind, whirlwind, will bloodthirst, raging blow, get enough rage, go into rampage. So that's sort of the core thing going on there. A couple of things to spice it up. The first one is execute. So that has about a five second cooldown. Um, <clears throat> this can only be used on targets that have less than 20% health. This does 1000 physical damage and generates 20 rage. So on execute, this becomes your most important generator button. Uh, so yeah, that, that becomes a, a big priority button in execute. And then the other thing, of course our filler is whirlwind, which does a tiny bit of rage and a tiny bit of damage. But for AOE, this becomes crucial thanks to this thing here. This is the whirlwind buff. Uh, you get two stacks of this every time you whirlwind. It makes your next single target uh, attack strike up to four additional targets for 50% damage. So essentially, that's that's your AOE, right? Essentially, in AOE, you're going to make sure that you have the whirlwind buff up at all times. So for example, right here, I probably whirlwind to make sure I cleave the uh, rampage. Whirlwind again, raging blow, bloodthirst, whirlwind to get that buff back up. Or raging blow, or rampage here, uh, and so on. So. That's roughly speaking what you're going to be doing. Oh, actually, sorry. I also forgot recklessness. Duh. This is your main cooldown, right? So that's very important too. Recklessness is your main CD. Um, hang on. I've got it. I've got something that's changing it. Um, it's a one and a half minute cooldown. Go Berserk, increasing all rage generation by 100% and granting 20% increased crit chance for 12 seconds. And it generates 40 rage. So, I mean, you do something like... I I'm not sure what the perfect rotation is, but something like charge in. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. We'll go into recklessness. There we go. 
um, and uh, just start spamming this stuff. I wasn't supposed to use Dragon's Roar there uh, outside of the window. That was a mistake. Uh, please forgive me. Fat finger the button. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. You're just going to get a lot more Rage Gen, do a lot more damage, and uh, get more Rampages out during Recklessness. And that's like the core flow of the spec. All right, so that was a quick refresher on the spec, but let's dive into what's actually new in Shadowlands. What's gonna be different? Uh, the first major thing that you're gonna notice, in fact, if I like mount up, you'll see from the way my weapons are sheathed here, you will see that I'm actually using two one-handed weapons right now. So this is now a choice, guys. It's now a choice. Uh, Single-minded fury has returned. So when you are dual wielding a pair of one-handed weapons, your damage done is increased by 8% and your movement speed increased by 5%. Or of course you still have Titan's Grip where you can do dual wield two-handed weapons. You don't get any benefit from that, but of course two-handed weapons hit harder and have more stats. So I did just a quick test of this. Just doing like one sort of cooldown rotation, hitting a target dummy for a minute and a half. And uh, hopefully I remember to edit this in on the screen right now. But you can see from this that for me, um, with, with 100 and 200 weapons of the same item level, it actually did the exact same amount of, of DPS. So this appears to be mostly a cosmetic choice. You know, which animations, which weapons do you like the look of the most? And also there's, there's of course, the question of loot and always the question of loot drama. So uh, that is something to look forward to. But yeah, if you like using one-handed weapons as Fury, you're going to be very happy because single-minded Fury is very much back. We also have um, leveling perks in Shadowlands. These are like extra spell ranks that you get at level 52, 54, 56, and 58. Um, the first one that we got here was uh, Recklessness Rank 2, actually. Um, so that's just baked into the ability, but this adds an additional two seconds of duration onto Recklessness. So in BFA, your Recklessness would be 10 seconds, and for the first two levels of Shadowlands, your Recklessness will last for 10 seconds. Uh, with this one, it lasts for 12, so that's just awesome. Uh, more uptime on your main uh, cooldown. At level 54, this is what all warriors are going to get. You're going to get Challenging Shout. It's a four-minute cooldown instant cast. Taunt all enemies within 10 yards to attack you for six seconds. Um, so this one is not as useful for Fury as it was for Arms, because Arms has Die by the Sword, which gives them 100% parry chance. So you could, you know, you could tank all mobs on a spot for those six seconds with infinite parry. Uh, you can't do that as Fury. I mean, you can still, of course, like taunt everything and then just heroic leap away and kite the mobs. Like, let's say your tank dies in a Mythic Plus, you can challenging shout, leap away, kite those mobs, have them taunted up while your healer or your, whoever has a battle res is free to battle res the tank and kind of save the save the, the run. So yeah, pretty cool. Nice bit of utility uh, with some skill to using it. At level 56, you're going to get Rallying Cry rank 2. This will give an additional 5% temporary maximum 5% uh, temporary and maximum health to Rallying Cry, bringing it from 15% bonus for your party and raid for 10 seconds up to a 20 percent bonus so that's just awesome um i think that's what they're going for with the the raid cooldowns like darkness is 20 percent chance of dodge damage uh, anti-magic zone is 20 percent reduced magic damage they like the 20 percent number so that's what that is and then finally at level 58 you're going to get execute rank 4 uh which will increase the damage of execute by 15 percent Nothing overly exciting there. I mean, you're going to be pressing Execute pretty much on cooldown. Uh, it's just going to do more damage. In terms of new abilities, then, we also have a lot of new abilities. And these are mostly focused on utility uh, and sort of niche uses. So first of all, Hamstring is, com is coming back. This costs 10 Rage, Instant Cast, do a tiny bit of damage, and reduce the target's movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. So this is going to be phenomenal for PvP. Um, and uh, might have some uses as well for some kiting strategies in, in, in PvE as well, potentially. Uh, so cool little niche use there. Uh, next up we have... I'm going to put these five, uh, these five, these three abilities together. So we're going to have Shield Block and Shield Slam uh, coming to the Fury Warrior. To use these, you obviously need a shield in your offhand, and you're obviously going to need a one-handed weapon in your main hand. So I can put on the shield, and you can see that we're going to get these things here. So Shield Block... It's got two charges, cost 30 rage, 14 second recharge here. Um, block all melee attacks for six seconds. Shield slam is an eight second cooldown, does about 500 physical damage. Uh, so it's interesting, like you, you can't use raging blow um, while you have uh, you don't have two weapons equipped and you can't use rampage, uh, but you will still be able to bloodthirst, you'll still be able to execute, you'll still be able to whirlwind. I think they will just do slightly less damage, I believe. Let's actually double check that. So bloodthirst is gonna do 373. If I put on, um, a weapon 
It's going to do 400. I think that's just the what that's just the single-minded fury buff. Um, so that's interesting, right? It's just that's just single-minded fury. The offhand weapon doesn't contribute the damage. But how are you going to spend your rage if you can't do rampage? Well, on shield block, and then you also have slam, which costs 20 rage, does 200 physical damage. Uh, so like compared to a rampage, it's it's not as um, damage efficient per rage, and it obviously doesn't enrage you, so you don't get that benefit from rampage. Um, but yeah, so the idea here, actually, uh, someone corrected me in the last video. Again, I've been corrected twice on this. So I don't even know who to believe. So I, I, my initial thought is this is pretty cool. You could macro this in. And again, let's say your tank dies or something in a Mythic Plus. Or again, in, in maybe in an arena, you could swap a, a swap to your shield and get a whole bunch of extra defensive benefit, more armor and the shield block effect. And you could tank for a bit or just be more survivable. Uh, so initially, I thought that you weren't able to change gear in Mythic Plus. But then someone, so I corrected myself due to the comment on, to, on that uh, note. And then I got another comment when I corrected myself, which is saying that actually, apparently, we will be able to swap weapons in Shadowlands. Uh, so who knows? Hopefully, we will be able to. That would make sense and be quite fun. You could make some potential, like, extra little plays with these abilities, which is always quite cool. Next up, something that is going to be incredibly useful in nearly every situation is spell reflection. So this is amazing. Uh, it doesn't need a shield, by the way. You can just, you can pop it with weapons out. Totally good. So 25, 25 second cooldowns, instant cast. Raise your weapon, reflecting spells cast on you and reducing magical damage you take by 20%. This lasts for five seconds or until a spell is reflected. So this is just insanely good for PvP. Like the plays you're going to be able to make with this, you can reflect like crowd control, you could reflect, you know, massively hard hitting spells, like you name it. There's so many things uh, that you can do with this. You can really be creative. And the same thing in Mythic Plus as well. Like you could really exploit certain bosses or certain mobs to again, reflect really dangerous spells back at them for a nice little damage boost or of course just use it for survivability for your personal safety um and again even in raid fights where you can't probably reflect boss abilities back on them and like a raid boss it's still 20 percent reduced magic damage for five seconds which is always really good so this is just a stellar ability and a uh, good creative use of this is going to be a big part of how you're going to be able to be skillful and express your skill uh, on the warrior dps classes uh, where it's been added for both of them so big thumbs up on that one Next up, then, we have Shattering Throw. So this is cool. It has a three-minute cooldown. This is coming back, of course. Uh, Bat Blast from the past. One and a half second cast, 30-yard range. Uh, throw your weapon at the enemy. Hmm, lighting change. <laughs> throw, throw your weapon and change the lighting of the zone. Uh, but it does 571 physical damage, ignoring armor, and removing any magical immunities. So these are things like Ice Block, Paladin, Divine Shield, all that good stuff, right? It also deals up to 500% increased damage to Absorb Shields. So this is obviously absolutely uh, game-changing in, in some PvP matchups. Um, and this could also have some niche uses in PvE as well. So this is a big piece of utility to bring back to the Warrior Toolkit. Uh, next up, we have something that will help our survivability, and that is Ignore Pain. Uh, this is quite expensive for the Fury Warrior to match up to the fact that you generate more Fury than, than Arms does. This does cost 80 Rage, which is the same cost as Rampage. Actually, that's worth mentioning. Rampage costs 80 Rage now, not 85. Um, but yeah, it's got a 12 second cooldown, cost 80 Rage. Fight through the Pain, ignoring 50% of damage taken, up to... Uh, 2,000 total damage prevented. So I've got like 12 and a half thousand health right now. So it's about one sixth of a health bar in terms of an absorb shield on yourself, uh, which is kind of nifty, right? So, I mean, again, in niche circumstances, this is going to be good just for that little bit of extra survivability when you really need it. Uh, another cool one, which is very intriguing, is Intravenous Comeback as a, as a new uh, standalone ability. So you still have charge. Charge is still the same, um, but Intervene is back. It's a 30 second cooldown, 25 yard range, run at high speed towards an ally, intercepting all melee and ranged attacks against them for six seconds while they remain within 10 yards. Uh, again, like this is a little bit better for arms where you can really exploit die by the sword to do some like fancy saving stuff. Uh, you're not as, as as tanky, let's say, as the uh, Fury Warrior. So there is some risk to this. But, I mean, number one, it's a good mobility ability to have. You can, like, zip around the fights a bit more. Uh, number two, this is absolutely massive for PvP. And it's also, like, a nice little external cooldown that could save, like, your healer in a tough spot in, in Mythic Plus or in the raid. And, yeah, obviously in PvP, you can use it to juke CC. You can use it to, to save people. It's just, this is a really, really nice utility ability to come back. So big thumbs up on that one. And, yes, okay, they are all the new baseline abilities that you're going to be getting as a Fury Warrior. On top of that, there's also 
a lot of changes to the talent tree. Um, not only uh, lots of new talents or reworked talents, uh, but also things have been moved around quite a bit. So like the tier 15, for example, I think Sudden Death has been moved to tier 15. Um, let me point out the main changes here. Uh, the main changes here. So first of all, fresh meat. This is quite cool. Bloodthirst always enrages you the first time you strike a target, and it has a 15% increased chance to trigger enrage. So this is quite nice. Um, um, you know, like, let's say again, like while you're questing or in Mythic Plus or in, in fights where you got new mobs spawning in, uh, you can definitely like kind of plan around this and really get good uptime on your enrage by kind of smart target swapping with your Bloodthirst, which I think is really fun. So that's a nice skill uh, benefit to it. And obviously it's gonna also just be super powerful while you're out questing and every time you fight a new enemy, you're gonna go straight into Enrage, which is great. So that's cool. At level 25, we got like obviously double time uh, as the two charges of charge. Uh, a Stormbolt's a single target stun. They have now buffed Impending Victory uh, to sort of compete better in this row. So Impending Victory will now heal you for 30% of your maximum health. Um, so that's a that's a very significant buff, uh, and, and it's definitely an interesting choice on this road. Do you want much better mobility? Do you want a ton of self-healing? Or do you want a big single target stun? So difficult decisions there. That's uh, an interesting talent row for sure. Uh, level 30 has been radically changed. So Massacre is mostly still the same. Execute and targets below 35% health, but it also reduces the cooldown of Execute by 1.5 seconds. So in this case, it would bring it down to a 4 second cooldown. Um... Frenzy then. Frenzy is really cool. Rampage increases your haste by 3% for 12 seconds, stacking up to three times, so up to a maximum 9% haste. The effect is reset if you rampage a different primary target. So this is lots and lots of, of extra haste. You, you have to be a bit careful of this in multi-target, but generally speaking, this is, um, yeah, it's a lot of haste benefits. So that's going to feel really good. And then Onslaught, uh, which has an 11 second cooldown. Instant cast, of course. Brutally attack an enemy for 800 physical damage, generating 15 rage, and it requires you to be enraged. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool. I, I don't know. I feel like this might be a little bit difficult uh, to use compared to the really nice, fairly passive benefits of these. But that's certainly an option. And obviously, you can, you know, you can cleave this with Whirlwind. So it's also a good AoE ability, too. So definitely an intriguing one there. And, of course, you know, it's going to be boosted by the enraged damage. So it's going to actually, in, in practice, do more damage than that. Uh, level 35 is the same. Level 40, we have another new talent called Seethe. Bloodthirst generates two more rage, bringing it up to 10 rage. And it will generate four more rage, uh, I'll I'll, two more rage or four more rage when it critically strikes your primary target. So just 10 more rage, 12 rage total if it critically strikes. So that's just more rage generation. Seems all right. Uh, Frothing Berserker has been reworked. Uh, Rampage has a 20% chance to immediately refund 40 Rage. This is going to feel pretty good, like especially in, in Recklessness, you can spam even more Rampages, so that's awesome. Uh, and then Cruelty has also been reworked. Uh, while enraged, Raging Blow does 20% more damage and has a 30% chance to instantly reset its own cooldown, up from uh, 20%. So, yeah, making Raging Blow slightly higher priority. That's a new level 40 row. At level 45, Meat Cleaver has also been reworked. This makes Whirlwind do 30% more damage, and now will affect your next four single target melee attacks instead of the next two attacks. So that, of course, is the um, uh, uh, buff where um, Whirlwind makes your next two attacks cleave up to four additional targets for half damage. Um, so this will, uh, yeah, this will, by default it's two, this makes it four, so it sort of smooths out your AoE rotation. Uh, kind of weird in the sense that it makes Whirlwind do more damage, but then you'll also be pressing Whirlwind less, because you're gonna, you know, be utilizing that buff more, so I don't know, it's a bit strange, but there it is. Uh, Dragon's Roar has been slightly nerfed, it no longer slows people, uh, but obviously, you know, it still does good AoE damage, and it does triple damage if it crits, and generating some rage. Uh, Blade Storm is, I believe, still the same. Level 50, Anchor Management, the same. Uh, Siege Breaker, I believe, is the same. And Reckless Abandon, this one has also been reworked. Uh, Recklessness generates 20 more rage, so instead of 40 rage, you're going to get 60. And it greatly empowers Bloodthirst and Raging Blow. So I'll show this to you, basically what it does. Long story short, Raging Blow is going to become Crushing Blow, which will do twice as much damage. Uh, and also have a little bit of a charge effect attached to it, which could be good in PvP, not very useful in PvE. You know, like, if you're popping your damage cooldown when you're not going to be in range of mobs, like, you're definitely... There's there's a problem with your planning there. Uh, Bloodthirst is going to become Bloodbath, um, which... Uh, 
basically just does double damage and also has a shorter cooldown. So instead of being every third ability that you press, right, so uh, Bloodthirst every third ability in terms of its cooldown, it's going to become every second ability that you cast. So if I pop this uh, here, you'll see here we go, Blood Bath, then we can do Crushing Blow, Blood Bath, out of range, it's actually quite small range, the charge, uh, and so on. So that's what this does, right? That's what this does. Um, I have mixed feelings about this one. My initial impression was, hey, this is really fucking cool. You know, has elements it, kind of reminiscent of Metamorphosis for Demon Hunter, where it actually changes your abilities. Like, that's really neat. Uh, I did find a couple of small issues with this one. Um, I, I, I had to rethink about it to pin down, because I thought, like, this is so cool, but I'm not fully enjoying it, and I couldn't quite figure out why until I thought about it. So the problem that I found out was that, especially in Execute, you know, it can get a little bit cluttered in the sense that you're try you want to now plus a bloodlust or bloodbath every second ability you want to be a bloodbath um, But then obviously you're generating so much rage You're also going to need to rampage all the time and then if you're an execute You also want to be pressing execute especially if you go with the Venthyr Covenant Which we'll touch on in a bit then execute becomes super important to press as well uh and then on top of that, you have the two charges of Crushing Blow. And you also kind of feel like you want to be pressing the Crushing Blow button. Because, well, that's been that's an enhanced ability. It's being buffed up. Uh, what I typically found was that, um, you know, you're going to be pressing uh, Bloodbath. And Rampage is kind of alternating quite often. Even in uh, some executes as well, or some Crushing Blows. But you're not going to be able to maximize all the uses of these. And even more so in AoE, you know, uh, it, it gets quite difficult, right? Because you're going to... Like, let's say I, I, I go in. Let me actually show it to you. So I'm going to go in. I'll, I'll pop this. Actually, I've already messed up in a sense. Like, now, if I want a Whirlwind to apply my buff, um, like, right there, we're going to overlap, like, the, the cooldowns you see. There, it works out rel relatively well. But the problem is that you kind of want to be alternating Bloodthirst and something else, Bloodthirst and something else. It's just kind of difficult to fit in all of the buttons, <laughs> you know, like, so you might be kind of forced to use Meat Cleaver specifically with this one, just so that actually keeping the Whirlwind buff up makes sense, because you just don't have enough abilities to fit in. And then one final point about this, which I think was actually even more coarse. So there's a small bit, I, I just feel like, I do feel like the rotation flows smoother without the cooldown reduction on on Bloodbath. I feel like the, the every third ability Bloodthirst just fits in better. It just feels better. That's my thoughts. Uh, you guys might not care, though. You might like this. But one final thought I had, which is also part of why I felt this didn't quite feel as good, is I thought about Demon Hunter. When you go into Metaform as Demon Hunter, it doesn't boost up Demon Spite, which is your generator. No, no, no. What de uh, Demon Form, what Metaform changes for Demon Hunter, it enhances your spenders. It makes your spenders way better. And that's the weird thing about Reckless Abandon. It doesn't make your spenders better. It doesn't make Rampage better. It makes your generators better in Bloodthirst and in Raging Blow. So my thought was, you know, very simple. I would actually personally, at least, and let me know what you think, but personally, I would probably enjoy this talent an awful lot more if you just take whatever, like, you know, do the maths and work out exactly how much overall damage, you know, like these, you know, these two changed abilities would do. But then just leave them as their baseline abilities and change Rampage instead. Make Rampage Bloodbath and just bake in whatever extra damage this is generating. Just make Rampage do more damage. I think that would be a lot more fun. That would be super cool. Uh, I mean, because the idea of, of obviously of going into um, Recklessness is do as many Rampages as you can. You're just going to go crazy with the Rampages. So just build into that. Just make Rampage even better. Uh, and that's going to be just... That would turn this from being a, you know, a, a decent button you know, if you, it's kind of cool, but I think that would turn it, it's a simple change, it would turn it from something that's kind of cool, in my opinion, into something that would feel just freaking awesome, like, I'm going into, like, reckless abandon, like, super recklessness, bloodbath, let's go, gonna do so much fucking damage, uh, it's gonna feel so good, so dirty, just absolutely ripping people to shreds with those, with those bloodbath rampages, that would be my thought, let me know what you think, though. For your conduits, which obviously slot into your soul binds, us the fury warrior, there are Endurance Conduits, which boost survivability, Finesse Conduits, which boost uh, utility, and Potency Conduits, which boost your damage. Let's look at the Endurance ones first. So there are four right now. Uh, first up, we have Iron Maiden. 
For Fury, this gives Slam a 4% chance to refund a charge of shield block, and there are going to be higher ranks that are going to increase that chance. Uh, so this one is very niche, I think, extremely niche. It's really going to depend, are you actually going to be swapping to your shield and using that very often? If so, this could be good. But generally speaking, I think this doesn't look all that generally useful. Next up, we have Indelible Victory. Impending Victory or Victory Rush will heal you for 400% of the damage it dealt over 8 seconds. And again, this is going to scale up. Uh, I think this will, roughly speaking, equate to about 30% about more healing total from that Victory Rush, which is going to feel pretty good. It's going to feel like a really good beefy heal. So this could be a nice option to go for. And of course, it will actually heal you more if you're enraged, which is kind of nice as well. That's kind of an intriguing synergy with, uh, with Fury. Or if it crits, it's going to be even better, actually. So yeah, kind of cool. Then we have Stalwart Guardian for Fury. This reduces the cooldown of Enraged Regeneration by 20 seconds. And again, this can scale up. So this is going to feel pretty nice. You know, reducing... Um, you're already getting Spell Reflection. So your survivability is already going up quite a bit as a Fury Warrior. But getting a lower cooldown on Enraged Regen is going to be even nicer on top of that. So that's going to be very welcome. Uh, and you put the two of those things together, and you're going to notice a big change in your survivability from BFA to Shadowlands. Then the final Endurance Conduit we have, not sure if this one will actually work for Fury, but I mean, it looks like it should. It's called Brutal Vitality. It is flagged right now as a Protection Warrior one, so we'll see. But what it does is it makes 6% of the damage you deal uh, will be added to your active Ignore Pain. Um, so this could be pretty nice uh, for Fury. Obviously, we do a lot of damage. Um, so you could potentially get a lot of extra healing out of your Ignore Pain. We'll see if this one actually ends up working for Fury or not. For the Finesse Conduits, the first one is Cacophonous Roar. Intimidating Shout can withstand 80% more damage before breaking. And this is going to get even more potent as it ranks up. Uh, this one is a bit weird. Um, I think there's a lot of risk to this. Intimidating Shout's your AoE Fear. Uh, it, this could be great in PvP. That's going to be fantastic for PvP. I think for PvE, though, there's a lot of risk. Like, it, it could sometimes be good, but then at the same time, like, you could easily be in a situation where you fear some mobs to, like, interrupt their casts, right? Or stop their abilities. Um, but then you want to break them out of that fear before they run in and pull another mob pack. So you could just, just be beating on these mobs trying to break that fear. And they just stay feared. They just won't break out. And they run and pull another mob pack and it wipes your group. So there is some risk to this one, I think, for sure. Very situational. Next up, Disturb the Peace uh, for Fury. Reduces the cooldown of Piercing Howl by 5 seconds. And this will actually scale up, looks like, to 15 seconds cooldown reduction. Bringing Piercing Howl down to a 15 second cooldown, which is awesome. Now an AoE slow. That's a nice bit of utility, fantastic for PV, uh, PvP, and pretty good for some kiting strategies in Mythic Plus as well, kind of nice. Inspiring Presence will increase Rallying Cry's duration and health bonus by 20%. So, a nice perk to help out your, uh, your raid survivability, your party survivability. Safeguard will uh, make Intervene even stronger. It will give the target of your Intervene a 10% damage reduction. And it looks like this goes up to a 24% damage reduction. So that makes Intervene a really good external cooldown. This is going to be, again, phenomenal for PvP. And actually quite useful, I think, for uh, for PvE as well. Of course, you know, if you use this on a tank, I think uh, probably not going to be useful on a tank. You're just going to get yourself killed by, by taking those redirected melee attacks. Unless you yeet out of that 10-yard range ASAP uh, before you get clobbered. But very useful to pop on like a healer or a DPS that's in danger. It could be really, really cool. The potency conduits for Fury Warrior. We have three right now. There's one still to come. But for the three we have, first up is Depths of Insanity. Recklessness lasts 20% longer. And it does look like this scales up to 60%, which is kind of nuts. If it's actually going to go in with that much value, that is kind of insane. That's so much more uh, duration out of your recklessness. So that's going to feel extremely good. And definitely... Um, Definitely enhances the value of the, the Reckless Abandoned Talent, which is enhancing your abilities while you're in Recklessness, so an intriguing one for sure. Hack and Slash is next. This gives Rampage a 10% chance to refund a charge of Raging Blow. It looks like this can go up to about a 20% chance to refund a charge. So that could, again, be quite useful for just you know more consistent Rage generation. Uh, not great in AoE, but certainly in, uh, in single target, that's going to be a nice boost. Vicious Contempt is next. Bloodthirst will do 40% increased damage to enemies who are below 20% health. And it looks like this is going to go up to 80% increased damage. Um, so Bloodthirst doesn't do a ton of damage. You're more pressing it for the Rage generation and for the Enrage chance. But 
I mean, every little helps. And uh, just building into you, your execute window, which is already a big strength of the spec, is always going to be a good addition. Oh, one additional thing we're going to look at here. I know we haven't looked at the Covenant abilities yet, but you can check back and kind of take another look at these once we do t uh, check them out. We're checking them out next. But these are the uh, conduits that actually enhance the Covenant abilities. Uh, first up, there's Piercing Verdict for the Kyrians. This uh, enhances Spear of Bastion's instant damage and rage generation by 20%. Looks like it scales up to 40% bonus. So that's going to be fantastic. Uh, I mean, what's not to love? Harrowing Punishment for the Venthyr. This will increase Condemned's damage and the damage prevention by 8% for each nearby enemy up to 40%. So this is insanely good as well. Uh... Yeah, it might even be overpowered, we'll have to see. Veterans Repute for the Necrolords. Brandishing a Conqueror's Banner will immediately grant you 5 glory, and while the banner is placed, your strength is increased by 12%, and looks like that scales up to 26% bonus strength. So that's a very nice buff, uh, and enhancing the personal benefit of the Necrolord's banner. And then finally, Destructive Reverberations for the Night Fae. Ancient Aftershock's cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds. That goes up to 30 second cooldown reduction. This one, I think, is is probably not quite as useful. And Well, I mean, it does have some uses, but, you know, it's going to depend. It's situational. Ancient Aftershock already syncs up perfectly with Recklessness. But if you're running Anger Management, or if you're just valuing Ancient Aftershock kind of as its own solo thing for what it does by itself, then this could be really, really good. For the Fury Warrior, for the Legendaries, first of all, we have four ge uh, General Warrior Legendaries. All Warrior Specs can use these. And then we're going to have four Fury Warrior specific Legendaries as well. For the General ones, the first one is called Leaper. And this makes Heroic Leap have two additional charges. Uh... This will be possibly extremely good later in the expansion. Um, I, I feel like, generally speaking, at the start of the expansion of Shadowlands, you're only going to be able to equip one Legendary, so you're probably going to want something that's going to give you more damage rather than more utility. Uh, whereas these utility ones could be really good if we're allowed to equip two or three or, heck, who knows, unlimited Legendaries? Who knows what they'll do? We have no idea. So this is definitely one to keep an eye on. I mean, at the very least, it's going to feel really fun for, for getting around the world and old raids and stuff. Next up, Misshapen Mirror. This one seems insanely good. Spell Reflection lasts 200% longer and applies to your party. So this is going to be a 15 uh, second buff. Uh, obviously, it still only absorbs one spell. But wow, what a, what a crazy ability, like in raid fights, where this, um, you know, it won't get consumed by the ability. It's just a straight up 20% damage reduction for 15 seconds for presumably five people, uh, which is amazing. Likewise, in Mythic Plus, that's amazing. Not to mention reflecting spells. How damn cool is that? Like, you could really exploit this to do some really cool things in Mythic Plus. Not to mention putting spell reflect on everybody in PvP, like in Arena. That's just insane. So damn good. So, yeah, this this one is an absolute standout legendary. Uh, with I mean, Spell Reflection already has so many cool plays you can make with it, and this just brings it up to the next level. Seismic Reverberation. If Whirlwind hits three or more enemies, it hits them one additional time. Uh, you know, it's relatively underwhelming. It's a bit more, um, it's a bit more rage generation, I guess. Uh... Yeah, I don't really see this one doing anything much. It's, it's quite bland, I think, for Fury. Uh, Whirlwind is pretty much pure filler. You're pretty much just pressing it to apply, apply the Whirlwind buff for Cleave. Signet, uh, Signet of Tormented Kings. Activating Recklessness will randomly activate Blade Storm or Avatar at reduced effectiveness. So this one is intriguing. I think this does have a problem uh, for Fury in the sense that... You're going to go into Recklessness. If it randomly activates Bladestorm, I mean, you lose control of your character, right? <laughs> like, you're stuck, in, you're stuck in the Bladestorm. Uh, so that one's kind of... I don't know. Like, that's a pretty big downside. I mean, if it activates Avatar, which is just a damage buff, that's phenomenal. That's so good. That's so damn good. But, like, Bladestorm, that could really mess up your rotation. So, I don't know. That one's a bit of a question mark. I mean, if it just dropped Ravager... That would be phenomenal, but because Fury doesn't have access to Ravager, I'm pretty sure it's just going to drop Bladestorm half the time. So, questionable for sure. The Fury Warrior specific legendaries, we have four of them. First up is Cadence of Fujida. Probably pronounced that completely wrong. Bloodthirst will increase your haste by 2% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 4 times for a total of 8% bonus haste. You should have pretty much full uptime on this. 
So, I mean, that's, you know, it's kind of nice. Just a bunch more haste. Going to feel pretty good at the start of the expansion when uh, when secondary stats are pretty low. So that's nice. Deathmaker is next. Your Rampage has a 25% chance to apply the Siege Breaker effect to your target for 5 seconds. Uh, Siege Breaker, by the way, increases the damage you deal to the target by 15%. Uh, so that obviously is potentially amazing. Like if that procs on the, the, your rampage going into recklessness, for example, you're just going to straight up do like way more damage, 15% more damage for that, that five seconds of recklessness, which is insane. So I think this one is very good. Um, it's, a, you know, it's quite random, but uh, when it procs and lines up well, you're going to really notice a, quite a substantial damage increase. Reckless defense, rampage critical strikes, reduce your recklessness and enraged regeneration cooldown by three seconds uh so this one is uh quite intriguing as well so yeah it, it's boosting up your damage of course because you're going to get off more recklessness casts uh and that will obviously synergize even more so with anger management which is also reducing the cooldown of recklessness but then also reducing the cooldown of enraged regeneration for more defensive benefit could be a very potent one in pvp or in Mythic Plus, like in any fight where you're not only valuing, valuing like your damage, uh, but also your survivability, this could be really good. Like, I mean, just more defensive cooldowns in Arena, that's going to be super, super good and difficult for the enemy team to play around. And also just getting into your big burst windows more frequently. Again, you could catch enemy teams by surprise. So a very interesting legendary there. And finally, then, the last legendary we're looking at is Will of the Berserker. When recklessness expires, your critical strike is increased by 5%. For five seconds and your raging blow will refresh the duration of this effect pretty cool i mean pretty much this is an almost permanent like five percent crit in uh in a lot of pve situations right so pretty nifty um yeah i think this is an interesting one yeah it's not the in the most exciting thing to play around in in the world though so there'll be a little bit of tension to make sure that you do raging blow to keep the effect going which is kind of cool but um, yeah, there you are. They are all of the legendaries for the Fury Warrior. Looking then at the Covenant abilities for the Fury Warrior. For the Kyrians, the signature ability is Summon Stuart. You call your Stuart to bring you a file of Serenity. And you can consume the file. It's like a health stone, basically. It has three charges. You can use one per combat. It restores 15% of your health. Removes all curses, diseases, poisons, and bleed effects. Uh, so again, whenever you're in a situation where you have nasty curses, diseases, poisons, or bleeds on you, this is going to be phenomenally useful. And then the Covenant ability for Warriors for the Kyrian is the Spear of Bastion. And this one is amazing. Throw a spear at the target location doing 200% attack power as arcane damage and an additional 216% attack power over 4 seconds. It generates 25 rage and it will tether enemies hit to the location for the duration. So this is amazing. Um, it is worth noting the area is actually quite small. It's like about an eight yard circle. Like it's quite a small little circle area of effect, but this does tons of damage. Like this hits super freaking hard. Um, it's arcane damage, right? So it bypasses armor. It doesn't, it doesn't get reduced by armor. So this does a lot more damage even than you would think. It hits super hard. The rage generation is obviously pretty nice. And recklessness, that's going to do even more rage gen. That's 50 rage, which is also pretty cool. And the utility of tethering enemies, very useful for Mythic Plus, for keeping mobs grouped up for AoE. Your team is going to appreciate that. For potentially some kiting strategies, for locking people down in PvP. Lots of uses for this one. Uh, it's a one minute cooldown, which is maybe a little bit of a downside in the sense that it doesn't sync up with Recklessness by default. Recklessness being a one and a half minute cooldown, you'll have to take Anger Management or the Recklessness CD reducing uh, Legendary to potentially make those sync up a bit better. Although, uh, that being said, this is so powerful that you might happily desync them anyway and feel pretty good about it. So, yeah, a very promising legendary there for the, or a very promising covenant ability for the Kyrians. Next, let's check out the Venthyr. Their signature ability is the Door of Shadows. This has a 35 yard range, one and a half second cast time, and one minute reach, uh, one minute cooldown. Uh, it's basically a point and click teleport went through the shadows appearing at the targeted location. So you choose where you want to go, you cast the spell, and you teleport there. Um, pretty damn cool. I mean, it kind of, it's very similar to Heroic Leap, which we already have as Fury Warrior, but you can kind of just add this on top of that for even more mobility. You can obviously use it as a teleport. You can just bypass all the mechanics in between there. So if there's a big laser spinning around or there's a, a nasty pool of lava on the floor, you can just get right on over. And potentially you could even like skip some packs and Mythic Plus and stuff like that. So uh, a very nice ability there for sure. And then their Covenant ability for Warriors is Condemn. This replaces Execute, 
making it do shadow damage. So again, ignores armor, which means it will do a lot more damage. And on top of that, you can also use it against targets above 80% health on top of the already existing only below 20% health thing. So that's amazing. Again, if you take Massacre, right? If you take Massacre, which again, you probably almost definitely will take Massacre if you've got Condemn. Um, you're going to be able to condemn people that are above 80% health and below 35% health. You know, uh, that's 55% like total range that you're going to be able to use Condemn during uh, and only 45% that you're not. You're going to be able to condemn more often than you won't be able to. So yeah, a pretty exciting one there for sure. Uh, not as crazy for Fury as it was for Arms, because obviously uh, Condemn does have a cooldown for Fury. But this is still going to do an awful lot of damage. And there's a lot of interesting gameplay that you can do. Like, I mean, like you pull a new mob pack in Mythic Plus, right? Um, pretty nice. You're going to be able to start, you know, whirlwinding and cleaving those Condemns uh, onto all the different mobs. Uh, so on top of doing, you know, kind of prioritizing sniping out executes onto those low health targets and cleaving that you're also going to be able to do that while they're at max health as well as low health so that's quite interesting um also of course you know <laughs> in raid bosses this is going to feel really damn good because well you typically bloodlust on pull and pop all your damage cooldowns and trinkets on pull well now you're going to be able to execute on pull as well until the boss hits that 80 percent health threshold so yeah this one is looking really really good uh, there's also the survivability aspect baked in as well, which is cool. So a very enticing one for sure. Um, yeah, this this could be a standout one for Fury Warrior. There's no question. This could be really, really good. The Necrolord's signature ability is called Fleshcraft. This is a two minute cooldown on a four second channel. You channel to form a shield equal to 20% of your maximum health. If you channel near a corpse, you can claim their essence to grow the shield and it can get as strong as 50% maximum health. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is just, it's a lot of extra survivability. Uh, it can help you, you know, soaking mechanics in raid. It can help you, uh, you know, j just power you up and keep you safer in Mythic Plus. It's just generally, you know, there's a lot of applications for it. I'm sure you can think of many. Then the warrior ability for the Necrolords is Conqueror's Banner. Brandish the banner of the Necrolords for two minutes, increasing your movement speed by 10%, causing Raging Blow to grant you glory. Killing an enemy will give you two stacks of glory. And when you reactivate the ability, you will plant your banner in the ground, giving 20% maximum health and 50% attack speed to you and four allies within 15 yards of the banner. And it will last for two seconds per stack of glory up to 30 seconds. Of course, it has a two minute cooldown to use the banner. This one's pretty interesting, right? This, it definitely stands out from the all of the other covenant abilities for the, uh, the warrior, which are all about kind of like personal damage. This one gives a group benefit. So... I, you know, you'll either love this or hate this. Personally, I think this is really nice. I think it's quite unique to have a different type of Covenant ability. Um, uh, the interesting thing for me is there's lots of different ways, I think, to use the buff, right? Because uh, you can choose when to place it down. Like, you can use it for the damage bonus for, for attack speed uh, during a burn phase. You could use it for the maximum health bonus for survivability. You could use it for both of them. And there's certainly the downside that while you're solo, that you're gonna not get as much benefit out of this as a solo player because i mean some of the power is going to be baked into the fact that you're buffing up not only you but four allies so not as good in solo play and then of course you know if you're going into like a, a mythic plus dungeon and let's say that i mean you're, you're going in and, and the other two damage dealers are a destruction warlock and a fire mage right are they going to care about the attack speed benefit no it's not going to do anything for them so you know like it's it, compared to going in with let's say uh, a marksmanship hunter and uh and an outlaw rogue they're going to appreciate that attack speed an awful lot more um so yeah i mean there's definitely pros and cons to this but i certainly think it's very cool i think it could potentially be extremely potent in mythic plus or possibly even arena as something to kind of like play around and coordinate with your team. So if you're playing with a coordinated team, I certainly think that this could be very enjoyable. Um, you know, if you enjoy that supportive play style, it's there for you. I mean, the only particular downside I think is if you really love the Necrolord Covenant and you really hate supportive abilities as the warrior, this might feel bad. But uh, if you're not too pushed about which covenant you join, you just like to choose your favorite one based off the abilities, this could be a very enticing option. And then finally, we have the Night Fae. Their signature ability is Soul Shape. Turn into a Vulpin, teleporting 15 yards forward and increasing your movement speed by 50%. You may reactivate Soul Shape every few seconds, every four seconds, uh, to teleport again. This lasts for 12 seconds. It also lasts indefinitely while you're in a rest area, so you can be a, a glowy fox person all the time in, in rest zones. Uh, and this has a one and a half minute cooldown. 
So that's an absolute ton of mobility baked into those 12 seconds on, on a one and a half minute cooldown. So potentially there could be some very uh, potent uses for this for sure. Um, and yeah, I mean, it could be kind of nice. Like you could save your heroic leap or your charge for other things. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, we'll see how this works out. I mean, I feel like it might in a sense be too much mobility, but we'll, we'll have to see. Then the Night Fae Warrior Covenant abilities, Ancient Aftershock, unleash a wave of anima doing 220% attack power of nature damage to up to five enemies, knocking them down for one and a half seconds. Enemies struck also take 42% attack power of nature damage every two seconds for 12 seconds and transfer it to you a six rage. This is instant cast and has a one and a half minute cooldown. Uh, I mean, so first of all, this is a, a five target, one and a half second stun, which is a, a nice extra bit of utility to bring to the Fury Warrior, which unless you talent into Stormbolt has no stuns at all. So that's definitely uh, an appealing option. It is worth noting, of course, that the stun is quite low duration. Um, so there is a downside that if your team already has, you know, stronger stuns like leg sweep or, or whatever, you know, getting diminishing returns on those stuns could actually be something of a downside. So that is something to consider. Uh, but yeah, this does a lot of damage in AoE. And it also is going to sort of trickle rage into you, which I think is kind of nice. I mean, the big competitor here is between this and, and the Spear of Bastion for the Kyrian. Uh, so the sort of comparison is that the Spear of Bastion generates a flat 25 rage, uh, no matter how many targets you hit. So single target AoE doesn't matter. Ancient Aftershock uh, is going to, if you hit five enemies, will generate 30 rage over 12 seconds. So it's kind of like trickles in slower. So it should be easier in a sense to not waste that. Um, but if you're hitting less targets, you're getting less rage. So that is certainly a concern. If they die as well, you're going to get less rage. Uh, Ancient Aftershock also does hit slightly harder. Um, but it's on a one and a half minute cooldown compared to the one minute cooldown of the Kyrian one. So the Kyrian one will do more total DPS if you're using it on cooldown than Ancient Aftershock. Uh, you know, I, definitely a plus though is that one and a half minute cooldown. That does sync up with the baseline one and a half minute cooldown of Recklessness. So those two go sort of hand in hand, which is pretty nifty. I think it's going to, like, both of them are going to be you know, good in their own situations. The Kyrian one is just more, you know, it's better in single target. It's got more upfront damage and a shorter cooldown uh, and more upfront rage generation compared to Ancient Aftershock, which has a stun component, is better damage in AoE, and uh, syncs up with Recklessness better. I don't know. It's... I would say that Spear of the this, the Kyrian Spear is better because it does have the tether effect. I think the tether effect is more useful than the stun, generally speaking. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that there could be arguments for both of them, and there's going to be situations where either one shines. Uh, Spear of Bastion being a bit better single target, or noticeably better, excuse me, in single target, does push me a bit more towards that, even if its cooldown doesn't sync up with Recklessness quite as well. And there you have it, guys. They are all the different pieces of the Fury Warrior here on the Shadowlands beta. So how is the spec? How's it looking? How does it play? The thing... Okay, I'm going to be upfront with you here. I'll be upfront with you guys. Um, you know, I feel like within the Warrior community, you've got, you've got the arms fury divide, where some people love arms, some people love fury, and, and there's a little bit of picking sides to, to an extent. Uh... I do feel that Fury is the more popular one, that more people like Fury than like ARMS. It's sort of the general impression that I get. However, for me personally, I'm 100% on the ARMS side of the equation. I don't actually like Fury much at all. Uh, in fact, I never have. Now, that being said, that doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, I get, like I said, I feel like it's a really popular spec. Loads of people love the spec. But for me personally, I just don't enjoy it. Now, I'll give you a fair, I hope, a fair take here on what is good and what is bad about the spec. I mean, just very, very quickly, though, to explain why why is it that I don't like it. Um, I, I did think about this a little bit. I think, you know, I thought of the metaphor of a roller coaster would explain it pretty well. Like, for me, I think a cool roller coaster is one where, you know, you kind of... You start off, you could go around like a sort of normal speed, like 50% speed for a little bit. Then you go really slow, like you're slowly going up a hill, uh, like 1% speed. And then, bam, you're down the other side and you're like free fall. It's just maximum speed, crazy. It's that variety that gives it a ton of excitement. And that's kind of like the specs that I like are kind of like that. I feel like ARMS is a bit like that, where, you know, you kind of in Colossus Smash with Ravager down, like you're just going mega speed, but then like you really slow down and, and you've, got, you've got the ups and you've got the downs. I feel like with Fury, Fury is going at like, it's a roller coaster that just goes at 80% speed the entire time. And then sometimes it goes up to like 90%. Uh, but it's pretty much just at that flat level. Uh, and that for me is just, I personally don't find that enjoyable. Um, 
I just feel like it's very spammy. You're just you're just spamming like out rampages all the time, and that that's really it. I mean, you're just kind of spamming all the time. It's my my feeling on it. That's my feeling. Now, of course, all that being said, that's a, that's a personal take, and, and and while I don't like that, a lot of people will like it. Uh, and I think if you do enjoy that aspect of the Fury Warrior, you're still going to enjoy it here. Um, and there's some really nice additions coming to the spec, I think, for sure. Uh, like, you've got sort of the, the choice between now going single-minded Fury or Titan's Grip. So that's a very positive thing. It's just more options uh, that you can choose which way you prefer to go. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that the talents as well have received a really nice uh, do-over. I mean, I would say that for the most part, None of the talents are going to have that big of an impact on your gameplay. You're still just kind of spamming away. Uh, but at least there is a bit more variety there. So maybe you guys will find something interesting in that talent tree that particularly catches your eye. Um, and then definitely the big appeal for sure for Fury Warriors with Shadowlands is the amount of utility that you're getting. The option to switch to your shield and, and have access to shield block and that survivability. The big plays that you can make with Spell Reflect, Shattering Throw coming in. Like there's just some really cool stuff there, some extra utility, which has definitely been something of a weakness for the Warriors. I think the DPS Warriors, while well, they've done good damage, um, you know, their utility has always been a little bit lacking. So getting extra stuff there and extra survivability, intervene as well, right? All that stuff is really, really nice. So that's a very welcome addition that's gonna feel super good. Uh, and, and yeah, you're gonna notice that having a much broader toolkit as the Fury Warrior. Uh, also, <laughs> one positive thing as well is that uh, one of the historic struggles for the Fury Warrior has been that their AOE comes through cleaving. Uh, up to five up to four additional targets thanks to the whirlwind buff um so they've been very much target capped right it, like in larger scale aoe they can't keep up with other classes or the, historically they haven't been able to so good news is that blizzard is putting in target caps for pretty much all classes uh in shadowlands at least that's what it looks like they're probably going to be doing uh and that is a buff for fury because uh it's kind of you know brought everyone's like crazy uncapped aoe uh down to to your level so that's a very positive change for fury warrior uh for sure in a kind of weird and ironic way but yeah that is the state of the fury warrior in shadowlands it's overall a positive thing i think it's generally improved uh with more options lots more utility uh it mostly pretty much just plays the same as it did before so again if you're one of the many people who love it i think you're still gonna love this spec uh for me I don't know if I'll ever understand why you do. <laughs> but there you go. There you go, guys. That's my take on the Fury Warrior. Again, let me know what you think, what you're looking forward to. And I'll catch you next time uh, for more looks at the Shadowlands beta here for World of Warcraft. See you guys then. Bye-bye.